everyone, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320 and I have a four drawer MCM dresser behind me that I'm going to be working on this week. And originally I thought that I was going to be able to remove the laminate from the top. However, this piece of wood in front looks nice and thick, but it only goes back about a half an inch and underneath is plywood. So I'm not even going to bother with that. Now I have to make the decision whether I'm going to paint it or add a veneer on top. That's an idea. We'll have to see. The drawers need some repairs done, so I have to decide that too, whether I'm going to stain or paint. Just don't know. Stick around. <music> I'm using vinegar and water to clean off my piece and I mix it at about a one to one ratio but I wouldn't worry about measuring it. It's not an exact science. The best part about using vinegar and water is it works really well and it is non-toxic. Oh, and it's cheap. <laughs> Depending on the piece of furniture you're working on, you are going to want to clean off the inside of the drawers along with everything else because you don't want to have to come back to that later. Especially if you are selling this piece, you want to get it clean, clean, clean so it's ready to sell. I am sanding off the drawers with my Random Orbital Sander by Bosch. I really like the sander. I have two and the other one is by Ryobi and I like that one too. There it is. I like this because it doesn't have a cord and it's not quite as powerful but it works really well especially on this piece. This piece was really easy to sand. Spray painting tips. When you're spray painting hardware, do the back side of the hardware first, then take your hardware, put it on a clean surface, flip it over, then spray paint the front side on the clean surface. Otherwise, you're going to have a sticky surface that's going to stick to your hardware. I used two different spray paints here. I first sprayed with the Champagne Mist, then I used the Sunlit Brass. That gave me the exact color I was going for. Instead of putting a veneer over this laminate, I decided I would scuff it up really good and then I was going to paint the whole top. I wasn't sure about the size, so that's why I'm sanding them so well. But I decided because there wasn't going to be a lot of paint on this piece, I would paint the entire top. These drawers had some serious issues with little nicks. So I filled them with wood filler and then I came back and sanded them nice and smooth. And you will see later how I worked with that even though I was staining those drawers. I wanted to show you both sides of this piece because the wood grain was so pretty. This was such a pretty veneer made out of what I'm assuming is cherry and the the wood grain was just gorgeous, so I wanted to show as much wood as possible on this piece. I'm using a natural finish on the bottom three drawers. That means that the stain is translucent or it's clear. There's no pigment in it, but it brings out the natural grain of the wood. Now the top drawer, I wanted to do something a little different. So I'm using a cherry uh, finish because it's cherry wood and it made it just dark enough to create a more interesting look. Now remember I told you about the chips in the drawers and I was repairing them. Well, I had to find a way to cover up those spots. You can see it right there on the corner and that's wood filler. I needed a way to cover them up with a stain that was gonna be dark enough that you wouldn't be able to see those spots. And this is what I came up with. Mm -hmm. 
You can do so many different things with stain and tape. This is painter's tape, scotch blue, and you have to be sure to get it nice and tight on the wood, and even then, you might have some bleed through. And when you get bleed through, you can touch it up with some mineral spirits. And then you can come back with a little brush and some stain and touch it up. Now this takes patience and it might not work the first time, but you can always come back and fix it. So don't panic if you get stain where you didn't want it. The color stain you decide to use really depends on what your needs are. I needed a dark stain to cover up my wood filler and I decided to use a lighter stain next to it which created kind of a shadow. I had actually thought I would replace these legs with legs that look just like them but legs that were in better shape. <laughs> But these were actually carved out of this block that's underneath it. And I just thought, yeah, that's pretty cool. I can make this work. I'll just paint it with this tobacco brown from Melange. And then use some champagne mist, the spray paint, to paint the very ends of these legs. Now, two legs already had little brass coverings, but the other two did not. So I needed to match them all. So I taped them all off and I used champagne mist and I sprayed it in a jar. Yep. And then you use a brush and you paint it on. And then you wait a couple of hours before you put a second coat on. Otherwise you just end up pulling the paint right back off. It's a very sticky paint. I'm staining that little strip of wood and I wanted it to stand out. I thought it would, but it's right next to the drawer that I stained cherry and I thought maybe painting it would be a better solution. These purdy skins are really my favorite for rolling out paint. They just leave a nice finish and you can find the information for those rollers in the description box below. This piece is a perfect example of using a veneer to really show off a piece of furniture and the reason you use a veneer is because if it's a more expensive piece of wood a thinner slice is going to be cheaper so it's not necessarily uh, a cheap piece of furniture when you use a veneer and this is perfect proof I mean look at the grain I am so pleased that I stained the majority of this piece because I think it really shows off this beautiful cherry wood In order to get that small strip of wood back to a state where I could paint it safely, because I did stain it with an oil-based stain, I used mineral spirits to get rid of the oil, and then I sanded it down, and then I painted it. It was simple as that. Well, guess what? <laughs> it's time for the hardware. And I really am happy that I was able to restore the original hardware on this piece, except for the two knobs on the top. I think it looks really nice. Every piece of furniture has its challenges, and I think that's the beauty of refinishing furniture, is to find out how to use those challenges to make a beautiful piece of furniture. Well, friends, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am thrilled with the way this came out. I am super thrilled that I got to use the same hardware that it originally had on it. I did switch out the top knobs because the knobs that were on there were quite cheap and I wanted it to be nice and solid. So I, they came last night and I just put a little spritz of champagne mist on them. They already were gold and these have a mixture of sunlit brass and the champagne mist. So I just spritzed them with a little champagne mist last night and they look perfectly fine. Two tips I want to give you. 
I have not put a top coat on this dresser yet because I'm waiting for it to dry. You want to give it at least 24 to 48 hours. It's been about 24 hours now, but I want to give it a little more time. Then you can put your water-based top coat. I use polycrylic. It's a polyurethane top coat, and this particular one is a clear ultra flat. The reason I wait to put a water-based top coat over an oil-based stain because I can get yellowing, and so can you, <laughs> on your top coat if you put it on too soon. You need to let your furniture dry sufficiently before you put your top coat on. Now, if you're putting a water-based top coat over a water-based stain, then you can can do it right away. If you're putting an oil-based top coat over an oil-based stain, you can do it right away. But if you have a water base over an oil base, you want to wait. But it's perfectly fine to use as long as you wait 24 to 48 hours. All right, one more. This is the One Series by Melange. It is a all-in-one, which means it has a top coat in it. Now, the one thing I learned on this project is there are times if you don't stir it well enough. And I thought I did stir it well enough, but apparently I didn't. And what happened was this. I got some spots on the top of my dresser that were shiny and other parts that were dull. And I attributed that to the fact that this has top coat in it. And if you don't stir it well enough, it's going to have spots that weren't integrated back into the pigment, the paint, and it's gonna leave spots. So all I did was stir, 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 and then I rolled it back on again. So I think I have three or four coats on the top, which is fine, totally fine. It's nice and solid, especially over the laminate. I wanted to make sure that there was enough paint there to keep it nice and solid. There are your two tips from Mel. Don't forget to stick around for the after pictures. Thanks for being here. See you next time. You can do it. It's electric when you kiss me.